Hello and welcome to week 12 tutorial of uh, CS311. Uh, this week the tutorial is on uh, chapter 12 that is file system implementation. Uh, files we know uh, they are stored on the computer system as blocks and there are different methods in which we can store and access those blocks. And one of those methods is contiguous allocation. So what happens in this method is this requires that each file occupies a set of contiguous blocks on the disk uh, just like an array and the details about each file is stored on a directory so in this example there are a number of files in this disk uh, there is this file called count there is this file called f tr and two others so in the directory we have the information about each file we have the file name we have the starting address and we have the length so for this file count, we have the starting addresses zero. That means the file is the starting at address zero and the length is two. That means there are two blocks in this file. For the file mail, the starting address is 19. That means the file is starting at address 19 and the length is six. That means there are six blocks in this file. So using the starting address and the length of the file, we can traverse the entire file because from the starting address we know how many blocks are there so in that range we can traverse or access any block the other method is the linked allocation so this looks very similar to a, a linked list so in this one each file is a linked list of disk blocks where the disk blocks may be stored anywhere on the disk and in this one, the directory contains uh, the file name, the starting address and the ending address. So what this means is that this file called G is starting at the address nine over here. And then the ending address is 25. And then in between, there can be any number of other blocks. Now each of these blocks will contain some data about the file as well as the block will contain the address to the next block. So if I go to the first block, that is block number uh, nine, then from this block, I can get the address of the next block, which is block number 16. And then on 16, I will get the address of the next block, which is address number one. Then the other method is the indexed allocation. Now this is also very similar to a linked list in the sense that the blocks in the file are scattered all over the disk but the address of the next block is not stored in the current block the address of all the blocks are stored in a separate block called the index block so the index block will contain information something like this so it says that the first block in this file is block number nine so the first block over here is block number nine in this file the next block is 16 right and then the next one is block number one and so on so if you want to assemble the file you will go to block number nine that is the first block then you'll go to 16 then one then 10 and so on and the directory in this uh, file will contain two information one is the file name and the other is the address of the index block and this index block is stored on the disk just like any other block. Now for the questions, the first one is uh, question 12.1. So it says consider a file currently consisting of 100 blocks. So there's a file on the disk uh, which has 100 blocks. So something like this, there is a file on the disk and there are 100 blocks in that uh, file. Now I have drawn 10 blocks here uh, just to visualize things, but you can imagine that there are 100 blocks in here. Then it says, assume that the file control block and the index block in case of indexed allocation is already in the memory. So what this part means is the directory which has the information about the file and the index block is already in the memory. So as we have seen over here, Right, we have the directory and the index block in case of the index allocation and the directory in case of the linked and the contiguous allocation. It is assuming that these details are already in the memory. So something like this. 
we have the directory in the memory in case of contiguous and the linked allocation and for the index allocation it is assuming that the index block which is this part is in the memory so this index block will have the information about each of the other blocks in the memory or, or on the disk so we have to calculate how many disk input output operations are required for contiguous linked and indexed allocation strategies if for one block the following conditions hold in the contiguous allocation case assume that there is no room to grow at the beginning but there is room to grow at the end so what this means is for the contiguous allocation there is no space at the front for the blocks to grow so if we have our file something like this in a contiguous set of blocks so it says that it cannot grow at the beginning because maybe there is another file that is stored over here maybe some other file is over here so we cannot add one more block at the beginning because that is going to override the contents of some other block but we can grow at the end because there may be space empty at the end of the file and it also assumes that the block information to be added is stored in the memory this means that the new block that we want to add to this existing blocks is already in the memory so we may have edited the file or we have done something and we have created a new block which we want to add to this disk and that block is currently in the memory so on the disk we have 100 blocks and on the memory we have the directory information and as well as the new block now it says how many i operations will be there if we were to add the block at the beginning of the file using contiguous linked and indexed allocation so let's look at the contiguous allocation first and we want to add the block at the beginning so at the beginning means before block 16 so that means we want to add the new block over here right at the beginning of the file now since we cannot add at the beginning because it says that uh, there is no room to grow at the beginning for the contiguous allocation so in order for us to add the block at the beginning we need to shift all of these blocks one step to the right and to do that we need to read each of these blocks and then write it back to one block to the left so if there are 100 blocks that we have to shift then we will need to read 100 blocks and then we will need to write, write those 100 blocks back to the disk so 100 for reading and 100 for writing so that is going to shift all of these blocks to one block to the right that means the last block will end at 26 and the new block will start at 17 so we have one empty space now at 16 and then we can take this new block and write it to index 16 so one write for the new block so in total we have 100 plus 100 plus 1 that is 200 i operations in total for the contiguous allocation if we were to write the block at the beginning of the file then what about if uh, we were to use a linked allocation so this is how the linked allocation would look like again you can assume that there are 100 blocks but i have only drawn 10 so if there are 100 blocks and if we were to write the block at the beginning then we can just simply add the block to the uh, disk anywhere in the disk and we can just change the pointers so in the directory we have the file let's say the file name is my file the starting address for this file is number 12 so the file is starting at address 12 and the ending address is 62 so the file is ending at uh, block number 62 now if we were to add this new block to the disk then we will need to make this new block point to the first block because this block will now become the first block so this will have to point to the second block which is number 12 so in this block we will write the address of the current first block which is number 12 so we will make this block point to block number 12 and then we will take this new block and write it to the disk right we can find one empty spot anywhere in the disk maybe 
block number 8 and we can write the new block to the disk so that is only one right then what if we were using the indexed allocation so this is how the indexed allocation looks like so there are 100 blocks in the, on the disk and one block has the information about all the other disk so this uh, index block will contain the pointers to every other block and this is the content of that index block so in the index block we have block number 12 so let's say the starting address is number 12 then the next one is block number 25 so this one then the next one is block number 5 so this one and so on so the order of these addresses on the index block is the actual order of how these blocks are arranged in that file so if we were to write the new block to the disk then we can simply write the block to the disk so that will be one write operation and in the index block we can update the index and let's say the new block was added at index number nine so this is how the index block will look like so the starting address is now nine and we have written the new block to the disk now you might think that we have also edited uh, this index block so why are we not counting that and that is because we are only talking about the input output operation that means we are writing to the storage and this index block is already in the memory so that is why we are not counting any read or write to this particular block we only read or write to and from the disk so that was for adding the block at the beginning what about if we were to add the block in the middle so if we were to write the block in the middle then we will need to shift half of the block to the right by one block to create a space in between so with 100 files or 100 blocks we will need to shift 50 blocks so we need to shift 50 blocks to the right that means we will need to read and write to the next block so that is 50 read and then 50 write to write it back and then after this 50 read and write there will be one empty space created in between and in there we can write this new block so that will be one more write so in total we have 101 io operations then what if we were to add to a linked list allocation now in here we cannot directly go to the middle uh, block because we need to traverse this in a linked list fashion so since we know that there are 100 blocks in the disk then what we can do is we can read 50 blocks from the beginning that is from the starting address and we will count 50 so once we are at the 50th block let's say somewhere in the middle over here now the next or the new block will be added and we will need to adjust the pointers that means the 50th block will now point to the new block and then that new block will point to the next block which is block number 70 now in here we know that since we are using this linked list allocation then in the current block or every block that block will hold the address of the next block so in this 50th block what we will do is we will get the information or the address of the next block in the sequence which is let's say block number 70 and then we will write that address to the new block that means we are making this new block point to the next block which is block number 70 and also we will need to make this block number 46 point to the new block so we will need to read 50 blocks to go to the middle block so that is 50 read and then to make this middle block that is block number 50 to point to the new block we will need to write to the middle block to add the information about the new block so that is one write one write to the middle block and then one more write that is to write the new block to the memory so in total we have 52 io operations and then what if we were using the index allocation so in the index allocation if we want to add the block to the middle then what we will need to do is we can just simply write this new block into the disk anywhere in the disk and then after that we, we will need to update the index block 
and somewhere in the middle over here we will add the address of the new block so we have done only one operation that is one write to the disk and then we have only updated the index block so that is only one write so in one write the block will be added to the disk and then we will update the index block now we will not count uh, this writing to the index block because that is already in the memory we are only talking about the input and output operations to the disk so that is one write then the next one is what if the block is added at the end so in the contiguous allocation if we were to write the block to the end then we can just simply go to the end of the uh, file and how do we know the end of the file that is by looking at the starting address right and then counting 100 from there so if we count 100 from the starting address we will end up at the last one and then in the last block we will add the new block so that is one right then for the link list now for the link list you might think that we will need to traverse the link list from the starting to find the last block in this list okay that is correct but in here since we know the ending address of the last block then we can just simply go to that particular block that last block and then in that particular block we will read the block so that is one read after reading we are going to write to that last block the address of the new block so one write to update the last block to have the address of the new block and then we will write the new block back to the memory so new block goes maybe over here at index number 72 and then we can update the directory so this directory will now contain the ending address which is the new address of the block that is maybe number 72 so in three operations we can write the new block to the link list at the end what about if we were using the index allocation so once again in here we will just simply write the new block to the disk and in the uh, index block we will go at the end of the index and in here we are going to write the address of the new block so that was only one write operation to the disk to bring the new block to the disk uh, then it says what if the block is removed from the beginning so what if we were to remove the block from the beginning in the contiguous allocation now in here you might think that okay so what we will do is we will take each of these blocks and shift it one step to left so again that could be correct but we can achieve the same thing in less number of operations and that is we know the starting address is 16 and the length is 100 so what we will simply do is we are going to update this starting address and this time we can ignore the first block because we are trying to remove that block so we will now say that the file is starting at block number 17 and the length is 99 so now 16 will be still there in the uh, disk but the file will be only from 17 to 25 so there are zero operations in zero operations we can achieve that then for the linked allocation if we were to remove the block from the beginning so to do that what we can do is simply update the directory to contain the address of the the second block but we don't know the address of the second block because that address is stored in the first block so we will need to read the first block so that is one read we will do one read to read the first block and once we read that we will know the index of the or the address of the second block which is number five and then in the directory we can write the starting address as number five so now since the starting address is number five the file will be read from number five so that is only one read then what about for the index allocation so what we can do is only update the index block now we know that the first block in here is the block number 12 so to remove that we don't actually have to remove block number 12 we can only just delete the pointer so in here we can remove this 12 from the index block and that block is now removed now removing that index or the pointer does not actually delete the block the block is still there 
only the reference to that block is deleted so that block is no longer part of this current block or the current file then what if the block is removed from the middle so in the contiguous allocation what we can do is uh, since there are 100 blocks then the middle block could be 50 or 51 so let's assume that the middle block is uh, 51 that we want to remove assume that the middle block is 51 so what we will need to do is shift all the blocks from block number 52 to 100 one step to the left so from 52 to 100 there are uh, 49 blocks so we will need to shift 49 blocks one step or one block to the left so that will be 49 read and 49 write because we need to read the block and then write it to one block to the left so in total there would be 49 plus 49 that is 98 io operations then what about for linked list so again we'll assume that the middle block is 51 so to go to block number 51 we will need to read 51 blocks so that is 51 read and from the middle block let's say this is the middle block block number 46 so to remove this block what we will need to do is change this pointer to point to block number 70 so that means we will need to update block number 25 to contain the address of block number 70 so 51 reads to reach block number 46 then one write to update block number 25 to contain the address of block number 70 so in total that becomes 52 i operations then what about for the index allocation so again we don't have to actually delete the block we can just simply delete the reference to the middle block so we will find the middle block over here let's say block number 54 is in the middle so we will just simply delete block number 54 from this index block so that doesn't require any read or write operation to the disk so in here we can do that in only zero io operations and then finally uh, the block is removed from the end so in the contiguous allocation to remove a block from the end we can just simply update the length so initially the starting address was 16 and the length was 100 and if you want to remove a block from the end we can just simply change the length to 99 so now the last block will no longer be part of the current file then what if we were to remove the last block from the linked list allocation now to do that we will need to update the directory once again so starting address remains the same and if we delete the last block from this allocation then the ending address will change to 41 but we don't know which one of this block is the second last block in this sequence we only know the last block is 62 but from here we cannot go back to 41 because there is only one way pointer so to get the second last block in the sequence we will need to uh, traverse this entire list from the beginning so there are 100 blocks and to go to the second last block we will need to do 99 read and once we are at the 99th block we can get the address of that particular block and update that in the directory so this will now change to 41 and that required 99 read operations then what about for the indexed allocation so again this remains the same as before so in here we don't have to actually delete the last block in here we can simply just change or delete the last block from this index block and now the last block is still there in, on the disk but it is no longer part of the current file so that required zero operations to the disk so that is all for this video thank you for watching